The Drug Alternative Program presents Drugs Close to Home. Your weekly insight into the ongoing stories of struggle, victory, and the spiritual renewal of rehabilitation. Each week, Cliff and Freddie Harris, co-founders of the Drug Alternative Program, would like to introduce you to the many people who have touched their lives through their spirit-filled ministry. But most of all, they would like to share with you the blessings they continue to receive from Jesus Christ. And now, your hosts of Drugs Close to Home, Cliff and Freddie Harris. Welcome to Drugs Close to Home, a program about the destruction that drugs causes our families and the power of Jesus Christ that heals them. We believe every life is worth saving. Freddie, that is so true, because every changed life is a miracle from God. Amen. Honey, you yes. gave me something this week. One red rose. Yes. Just because. I love you, that's <laughs> why, just because. Thank you. You know, One Red Rose is the trademark of our marriage, and it's also a part of our logo. So when he gives me One Red Rose, it's very special. And you know what's so important, you guys? I don't have to buy her a dozen of roses. All I have to do is just buy one. Because <laughs> if I bring more than one, she's not too happy with that. She wants that just one red rose. Right. You know, we both have three children each. I have three, Sherry, Tony, and London. And you have three. Um, what's my children's name? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have Jeffrey, Rhonda, and Stephen. And you know, we've never had any of our children on our program, but today we have our son, Tony Farmer. Welcome, Tony. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you for having me. Pleasure <laughs> to be here. Yes. yes. It's a blessing. You know, I call him my tall giant. How tall are you, Tony? 6'10". 6'10", you know, and tell us a little about yourself. Well, I mean, obviously I'm born and raised in California. I uh, was born in 1970, 45 years young today. <laughs> and just looking forward every day of just transitioning every day to, to be a giant of God, trying to make my life better, trying to get things in order every single day of the week. And one thing that I've loved is to see how the growth of this ministry. I remember back in uh, 1985 when you and dad met, I was a rebellious 15-year-old and saying, there's no way that this how, guy's going to be I was yeah. like, there's no way that this guy is going to be able to come in here and take care of our house. And I remember, Mom, you had promised us not until we leave high school that you weren't going to do anything. I did. You know, I promised my kids. I said, I'm not going to get married until you guys finish high school. But, you know, God had a different plan for us. It was not my plan to yes, meet Cliff Harris, it. but he did. But, Tony, I don't know if you remember, you know, when I met uh, Cliff, that Saturday night after I met him, we were driving home. And I told you guys, and I know how protective my children are of me, but we were driving home. And I told you, I said, hey, you guys, I said, someone at church is interested in me. And Tony, you said, who, Mommy? I said, Jeffrey Harris's father. And you said, Mommy, if it's any man I want you to marry, it's him. And I knew that was the Holy Spirit. You probably don't remember that, Tony, but that was, that was profound for you to say, hey, this is a guy that I think you should marry. <laughs> yes, I, I, I do remember. And I remember the first time that Dad took me to work with him. Whereas in his Mustang, and we had a, a, a roasted chicken, and he showed me how to do the bricks and everything. So he just took a, a vested interest. And I remember we got that first station wagon. He let me drive to choir practice by myself. Right. So I was like, mm. he's, he's definitely, you know, a, a man of trust. And then you look at how the ministry is formulated today and all these guys and how they change lives. So you're right. You just never know what God's plan, because a lot of time we feel like our plan is the best plan, but his plan is obvious the eternal plan. So mm -hmm. you can see that, you know, having his hand in everything on a daily on a daily basis of one's life helps things transition better. But you know what, Tony, I always wanted, even in when I was doing my drugs, I wanted to help somebody not go through life what I went through. And so that's when I was always had that passion to help somebody that was in my situation. And so, you know, for that to come into play, it was it was a transition that we made within that in that period of time. And you know, we as parents, we feel sometimes that we put our children on the back, you know, 
for the ministry. You know, we get so busy, so involved in our ministry. So how have you felt through the years, you know, as we've done the ministry? How have you felt as far as being our child, you know, and we having a ministry like we have? That takes up all our takes time. Takes up all of our time. I mean, I, Mom, Dad, I never really took it personal because I can relate, you know, my basketball career, not being home for my kids, not being there for when London and Tasia was born and knowing that, you know, there's things that we feel like we're required to do and you feel if you take your foot off mm -hmm. the gas, you're not going to be able to help the guys or I feel like if I take my foot off the gas, I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. So, you know, the fact for me personally, the fact that it happened when I was a little bit older helped me really understand more. Maybe if I was a little bit younger, I would have, I would have been a little bit more rebellious because I would have felt like the needs that I, I needed to have met as a child mm -hmm. weren't met. But as you become a young adult, I always ask myself, how can, you know, what can I do to help or what can I do to, to be more involved? And, you know, it's easy for me to look at things because I, I've never had a substance abuse problem. I've never, I never had an alcohol problem. So when you look at as a child, I never took it personal because I know this is a full-time it's actually a lifestyle. It's not even a job. It's a lifestyle. Amen. And you know, when you, when you say that, that you've never drank or smoked or anything, and you have been in the NBA, and for you to be in the NBA and not drink or not smoke, you know, I really admire you for that because that has, that's, that's a miracle. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and, and for me, it's always been a personal choice. I'm, I'm not one that's easily influenced in life, period. So mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I realize is I wanted to be in control of my destiny. You know, meaning that I didn't want to get that DUI. I didn't want to, you know, be busted for drugs because, you know, those are lifelong scars that, you yes. know, there's there's things that a person has to deal with for the rest of their lives. With the fact that you and dad have transitioned this to a lifestyle, it's kind of I have a chance to live vicariously through you guys because you see the, the situations that these guys go through. They go in, come out, go in and come out. And, you know, I've seen... A lot of things happen over, you know, a 20-year period, and I'm thankful that I'm actually like closer out here. I can see more, but, you know, one thing you look at an addict, you can be addicted to sugar. You can be yeah. addicted to <laughs> drugs. <laughs> wait, wait just a minute, Tony. You shouldn't have said that sugar <laughs> part, you know, because that's something that especially addicts right. really are addicted to because right. we love to take and eat that sugar. Right. And most guys that come mm -hmm. in here, they go from drugs to sugar. Correct. You know, we have a vegetarian diet. You know, they don't get sugar every day. We try to give them healthy food and, you know, so they can get away from, you know, the sugar because sugar is a poison. It's an addiction. Yes, yes. Correct. Tony, tell us a little bit about you and the NBA. Tell us some of the teams you've played for and what was your life like, you know. I started off the with, the, uh, with the Lakers my first year and then I went to Europe and then I came back and played with Miami, Charlotte, Golden State, and Cleveland. And people always ask me what has been the best team that I've played for. And for me, it's been two, it's been a three different situations. The best coach I've ever learned from has been Pat Riley because he's so much of a disciplinarian. He uses the same colored pens, wears the same kind of suits, <laughs> says the same, you know, different speeches. And I learned mm -hmm. a lot from that of just how to be a professional. You know, he, he taught me a lot how to be a professional. Then, you know, I get to a team like Charlotte where I became closer to some players that, you know, are on that team. And then to go to Golden State and was here in California, so you guys have a chance to see more. But the thing that, you know, people don't realize what happens on TV is about 45% of what happens in the lifestyle, you know, the behind the scenes. In other words, behind the scenes. The behind the scenes is just like this program. It's nowhere near what people think it is because you'll have a team, you know, tell you, hey, we're trying to trade you. You know, we're not sure what we're going to do with you. You know, you see uh, a lot of athletes, they just go back and forth with, with their own issues and they bring those issues to practice, they bring those issues to to the game, so the fraternity itself, you know, you're going to be on the team or you might have 10 to 12 different personalities. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I've never really wanted to coach per se as much because I just didn't feel like I have that desire to do that. You know, I more had a desire to be a business person. But, you know, professional sports is a tough grind. Yeah. You're required to be a professional year-round. And I, because I never got involved with drugs and alcohol, it was easy for me to speak on that to kids and mm -hmm. you know and you see people who players and and coaches who might have those issues and it's kind of a fine line for them to talk because they're, they're battling things themselves internally. Yeah. Well do you have a sense of security uh, that you know it's like a job I have job security do you feel that or you feel insecure because you might be traded anytime you might be uh, sure. you know 
cut from the team anytime. I, I think it's that? I think it's a sign of insecurity just because of the fact that you know you feel so proud that you're one of the the one or two or three percent that actually make it to the league, but the fact that like, you have to wake up all the time that you can you might have to catch a flight, you know your livestock being unstable, you can think that a team loves you, and all of a sudden you wake up and you're gone. So, I mean, the fact that I played for as long as I can, I mean, I've had some great experiences, but you know, at the at the end of the day not playing and doing that grind every day, it really gives you a chance to kind of rediscover yourself again. Because, you know, when you're playing, you get so caught up in the play, you get so caught up in the crowd, you get so caught up in the lifestyle and having to move and transition. And it's a lot tougher than people think it is. You know, you have two beautiful <coughs> children. And by the way, you guys, Tony named his son London, and London named his son Anthony. So they kind of switched with the names. And you have a 14-year-old son, London, and a 13-year-old daughter, Tasia. Tell us about them. <laughs> I mean, they're two dynamic children. You know, Tasia is, is natural, London is, is adopted, so, you know, they come from two dynamic lifestyles, and it's interesting as, you know, adopting London and him coming from a family that was, uh, had drug issues as well from uh, the mom's mother, which is the grandmother, and things like that, but, you know, you never really know the value of life until you experience parenthood. Right. You, you see your children pick up some of your traits. You see your children <laughs> have a chance to growth and it's just hard to believe that you know I have two teenagers now as right. opposed to I can remember the day when they were loaded and walking around but you know the thing that you look is they become your motivation you right. know your motivation is I want to be the best example for my children and we all know as anytime you know you come from a broken home and you know parents are divorced and you got lifestyle changes yes. you got parental changes the best thing you can do is be the best you and right. I've learned to do the best I can to be the best me am I perfect no but I know we live in a perfect world, and I look to strive to be a better father, a better person. And seeing these kids progress who they are, it lets me know that the foundation started within from when you guys raised us and right. how we're going today. Right. Well, they are special. I just wish I lived closer to them. They're in Utah, and we're in California, but Tasia's going to be tall like you. This girl is so tall, you guys. She plays volleyball. London likes football and basketball. So they are really growing up. No yeah. more babies. <laughs> yes, they become adults fast. Right. Very fast. A right. year or two years goes by very fast. Well, listen, we want you to stand by. We'll be right back. Uh, when I first got to DAP, um, I was initially a little resistant to the, the time that it would take, uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, that that scared me because I I just kind of wanted to get better and move on with my life. All the programs I'd been to were, you know, from a week to 60 days or 90 days, but 12 months to 18 months was just outrageously long, and that scared me. But when I got here, my impression was, um, you know, I wouldn't have come unless I I finally decided that it, it didn't matter anymore. The, the, the time was of no consequence to me. Um, I screwed everything up so bad, I, I just wanted above anything else to get better. The longevity of a program, you know, I see it as um, you have to get serious with yourself, and that's what I'm doing. I have decided to, to make that difference in my life. That means no matter how long it takes, even if it's more than 18 months, then that's what I'm gonna do, because it has brought structure in my life to do the things that I need to do to make sure, I, you know, when I get back out there, you know, I always want DAP in my life too, no matter where I go, because I like the, the, the fact that the way they help us, it's, it's, it's pure love. It did shock me the, the long amount of time that it was gonna take, but I see it as a positive because they're not trying to just uh, change you for a, a short amount of time, they're trying to change you inward, spiritually get you connected with God and to get you to really know who you really are. I didn't know who I was. I didn't love myself. If you're considering to be a donor, I would, I would plead with you. I would, I would encourage it. I would ask you to consider what a difference it would make to people who want to change, who have the desire to change, but for some reason, because of the effects of drug and alcohol and their addiction to it are an impasse. It's like there's a block there somehow. They want to get better, but they can't. What you do helps them get past that. 
and once they get past that and cross that bridge and finally become changed people is a reward that has a value beyond measure. Welcome back. I want to tell you, here is the telephone. Give us a call. We'd like to hear from you. Now, actually, Freddie, this phone really does it work. It does work. It does work. And you know, um, I want to say this. My cousin, Bobby Palmer, he laughs when he sees our program and he talks about that telephone to me. So give us a call. We want to hear from you. I'm sure you, you know someone that needs help. You might know a person that's addicted to drugs that needs help. So be sure, give us a call. Okay, Tony, we were talking before we left, but we want you to talk about an NBA player. Once he leaves the league and starts a normal life, how does that go? Well, you know, one thing that is the big difference when you play and when you're not playing is while you're playing, you're so caught up in playing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to remain in shape. You're trying to still be a father, trying to be a husband, boyfriend, whatever that is, and you get so caught up that you kind of lose grasp of what life is really about. And one thing that I've noticed is a lot of athletes have a tough time transitioning to life after basketball, football, baseball, because now they have to wake up and do something different, maybe mm -hmm. have to get a job if they're financially in a better situation, then they can build business. But you find that a lot of them struggle because of the fact that it's brand new. Mm -hmm. Now it's almost like your mm -hmm. first year playing a sport. Now you're like a rookie in life. <clears throat> now you're waking up saying, okay, well, do I go to work? Do I take care of my businesses? Now I can be a father. And a lot of times you see they end up gaining more weight mm -hmm. or not being as healthy or having health issues or having legal issues because you know, a lot of them just don't have guidance. Right. And one thing that I've noticed myself and even trying to keep in contact with, you know, some of the players I play with or play against, a lot of them go missing in action. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot oh, of them really? are trying to figure out, you know, what they want to do. I have a, a, a former teammate that he was driving drunk and, you know, uh, got convicted of manslaughter. And now he's doing three years in prison. Mm -hmm. um, I have another friend I was just telling your mom the other day, 49 years old had uh, four heart attacks in a week mm. and so he's fighting for his life and you know you just never know what God's plan is what his message is and that's why I always encourage people is you know to me life is about mindset and yeah. we all have choices and unhappiness is a choice. And Tony I really admire you you know as far as your health you still go to the gym every day you eat a, a healthy diet you know you're really zeroed in on feeling good looking good and being an example of what you know manhood is really about you know like you say your friend gained I think you say he weighs over 300 pounds 350 this guy's what people <clears throat> playing basketball you know mm -hmm. so it's so important when I see you keep your lifestyle up as far as physical mental and spiritual because I, I look at the thing is is you know you look at different things the TV can be addictive you know mm -hmm. certain things could be you have an addiction and sometimes you speaking know, of addiction excuse me my son was addicted to the iPhone I never saw him without that iPhone in his hand and you came uh, recently and I said Tony what happened he left the iPhone in the car so that's one addiction you had and you are doing so much better. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've learned that, you know, over the, over the course of life is to expose myself to different things. Now I've been becoming more of an avid reader and, and I, I can easily test, you know, testify that when you read and you get that spiritual foundation, it really clears yeah. your mind. It yes. really gives you that independency from codependency. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you realize that, you know what, God, I just need to let go and let you handle this. Because, you know, when you're so caught up in the world, especially as an athlete, it's funny that, you know, you, you get on your knees in prayer when things are bad, but, you know, but when they're good, how faithful are you, are you? Are you to, are to the ministry? And so I've, I've learned myself as I'm reading a book right now um, from a guy named Charles Stanley called The Man of God, and just the first two chapters have really opened my eyes of things that I looked at things differently. When I look at, you know, athletes and I look at so many young athletes mm. today, they, now today's athlete has entourages. You know, you got mm, the yes. AAU coach, you got the brother, you got the mom, you got everybody telling each player, each athlete what to do. And in reality, when I was coming up, it was pretty much me having myself and trying to figure everything out. And one thing that I've learned is like, you know, consistency is a big thing that I've, looked, that I've learned that is uh, very important. 
you know, we <coughs> just had a party for your dad. And Tony mm -hmm. has a special talent, you guys. He can yes. write poems. Yes. So for the party, he uh, made a nice picture frame of uh, us. And he also wrote this poem. And I want to read this poem to you. And he, it's on the president. Is the, that me? That's you. That's me. The president. <laughs> El Presidente of <laughs> Drug Alternative Program. Okay. It says, the president is a man that loves to take charge. He loves and cares as well as use his credit card. The president is a man that has tough love as he's given his guidance from the good Lord above. The president is one that has been through many fires, but makes his decisions as his burning heart desires. The president is often a husband, father, and brother with family values that compare to no other. The president is a man that everyone has grown to know. He makes decisions and runs the show. Mr. President, I want to say happy birthday to you for being an example to his family and DAP too. Enjoy this day because it is all you. I love you so much and I am thankful for you too. All right. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. You're that welcome. Nice. And I like this picture that it's on. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you get that on there, Rodney? Yeah. That's one of my That's favorite nice pictures. Picture. Yes. And, and Tony, you have such a talent for writing. I mean, he can write a poem like this in five, ten minutes, yes. you know. Yeah. And every uh, event, I've asked him to write a poem, and he's always given us a nice poem. So thank you for, you're welcome. for your dad. <laughs> you know, I want to ask you, tell us what you're doing today. What's happening with you today? Well, now <clears throat> I'm involved with a few different things. I've, I'm excited just because I have a really good friend that um, approached me about joining him in some business things, and we have a, mm -hmm. a, a product called the U-Box. And the U-Box is basically we help people eliminate cable bills. So as Dad loves movies, we have all these movies. It has live TV, has every cartoon, every movie, every made. I mean, so many stations. And last night I watched one of the movies. It was actually inside the theater. So I'm involved with them with that right now. And it's, I mean, we're, we're definitely helping a lot of people uh, save money in their cable. You know, the unit costs three ninety nine, and you never have a bill. But uh, the company ordered 1,000 of them. They came in Monday, and they're already sold. So wow. that's going good. Mm. And then also, too, I'm doing social media and health and wellness and, you know, working on my own reality TV show that's going to be coming out soon. So I stay busy. I've just learned, you know, through my own trials and tribulations, you can never have all your eggs in one basket because oh, at the end of I the day. I that years ago. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I've learned kind of the hard way. So I have myself busy. I like keeping busy and just really focus on uh, being the best person I can daily. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, you've been around DAP a long time. You've seen a lot of guys and come in can go and come in and go Wait out a minute, Fred, before you go there he comes and he plays dominoes <laughs> with the guys <laughs> i'm telling you he loves to play dominoes so my favorite thing and, to do with those guys and he loves to beat them <laughs> oh it's so fun and also boggle you know i'm the boggle pro yes. at dap until tony comes and he just beats me down you know so <laughs> games he's very good at that but what are some of the experiences you've seen here with us here at dap with these guys I mean, one thing that I've seen that the main thing that I tell people all the time is that you guys are very consistent you know, and very patient. And I tell, I was telling one of my friends the other day that you and dad are like good cop, bad cop. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> dad is that person that sits down. He's heard every story. He heard, he's heard every excuse. You're, you're, you give him that motherly love and he gives him that tough love. But, you know, one thing that I really respect more than anything, you guys, is that you guys allow people second chances. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen Pierre, I've seen Rob, I've seen these guys come through the program a couple of times. And, you know, it's not always their fault for their circumstances because mm -hmm. they come, th you know, guys like that, they come through. And sometimes it takes them a minute to get it together. But when they get it together, then they have a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys know one of my favorite guys is Tracy. I mean, right. he's been here for 14 years. I've watched <laughs> him come in. <clears throat> I mean, when he first came in, he had every excuse in America. <laughs> and now you see him in a healthy relationship. So those kind of stories are things that really excite me. The fact that I've seen you guys be consistent. But, you know, I also realize that you guys have a, have a method to the madness. You know, you see some people go to halfway houses. You see people go to, you know, where they can go to work and come back. But some of those people that are running those places, they treat them like a job. You guys mm -hmm. treat it as a lifestyle, and it's a big difference when yes. you live and breathe. We're part DAP. of a family here. <clears throat> exactly. And you know, I want to tell you about Tracy. Tracy still works here for us. You know, this is his job. And guess what? <clears throat> He's into a relationship. <laughs> nice Christian girl, and I can tell you, she loves him, and you can tell a difference in him right He's now. He's got a pep in his step. Got a pep in his step, and he's... this. 
just he joyous. Feels important. And, he right. feels important now. and he's lost about 50 pounds, right. you know, just looking yeah. really good. And I'm jealous of him, too. <laughs> huh? You know, he's, he's losing weight, and here I just cannot get down, but I've lost 36. Amen. That's great. Amen. That's a start. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm coming, too. Yeah. If you... Uh, would like to be looking at camera over there to Tony and to, t to just give some advice to young men who are coming through the program or who are thinking about coming into uh, uh, NBA, what advice would you give to them? The advice I can give to any young man that's starting the game of life is to be the best you. Be the best you that you can. And when you know that you need help, get help. Seek help. Get into a program where your lifestyle can have a chance to improve. <clears throat> don't, st don't make excuses of why you can't do this, what about this, what about that, because you still put yourself in the same position. And one thing I can always tell you, if you leave it all on the altar, the altar will bless you. <laughs> thank Crazy. you, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to just do this one more time about the telephone. We would love to hear from you about the telephone. You'll see the number right here on your screen. So give us a call if you need help or you know someone or family member that needs our help, give us a call. We would love to hear from you. Freddie, what's your last thing that you would like to tell somebody out there in the audience today? Well, I want to talk to my son. Well, you know. here's your chance. You talk. <laughs> you know, Tony has been a role model, you know, for our family. And I just want to let you know how much I love you and I appreciate you for being my son. You know, you've gone through a lot, you know, you've gone through a divorce, you've gone through a lot of changes, but, you know, just in the past few years, I've seen you just to step up to the plate, you know, uh, increase your spirituality, relationship with Christ, and, you know, you guys, we talk on the phone, you know, I would uh, give him devotionals, we talked about the story of David and different things in the Bible, and just encourage him, and you've always been my spiritual partner because you've been the closest here in California to me and I just want to let you know that I'm proud of you as my tall giant. <laughs> Thank you and I, and I want to tell you and that I'm, I'm glad to be your son but to tell you guys that I appreciate and love and, and how you guys have always shown me the tough love and the unconditional love and you know words can't explain for that and it really makes me happy to see that these these men and have a chance to transition and I'll be glad when you guys will have a chance to go into the pasture and retire in Alabama and, <laughs> and be able to do oh, that one day. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> we're working on yes, that. We're yes. working on that. But we say we're not going to retire. We will do this until we... Some phase of it right. until Jesus comes. Right. We want someone to take over the day-to-day -day activities. Right. But we'll be doing speaking engagement, fundraising, or whatever. Thank you, son, for being with us today. And we want to thank you for being here, too. And if you want to reach us, you can find us on the Internet. You might have a loved one that needs help. You might need help. So we're always here for you. And remember, we love you. And Jesus loves you even more. And we will see you next time.